Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be flipping our axles on this to get a little more clearance. So if that's something that you're interested in, want to get a little more clearance, keep your plumbing, that kind of stuff off of the ground, um, this might be something that you're interested in. So we're going to start, I'll kind of explain to you what the process is there, how we go about it, and then yeah, it's up to you to do your own. I'm gonna have Brady get this all jacked up and stuff so we can get these axles underneath it. But you can see how these leaf springs are underneath the axle in this. We're gonna reverse it to where the leaf springs are actually on top of the axles, giving us, on this one, it'll probably net us about five inches of lift. So I'll show you on one of our camps um, how this will be set up, but we're gonna get this up in the air, get it jacked up, get it on jack stands, get the tires and stuff pulled off of it so we can get those flipped. So this is one of our camp frames. As you can see, the axle sits below the leaf spring pack, um, which gives us quite a bit of clearance. So that's what we're trying to accomplish with this trailer. And I'll kind of show you how that is. Maybe I'll just climb up in here real quick and show you. So you can see there's a perch that sits right on top of the axle that's welded to the axle tube. A lot of people that I'm seeing flip their axles um, that are having a lot of issues are thinking that they can just roll that axle and put it on the bottom of the leaf springs um, versus inside the leaf springs. The problem with that is you can see on these axles, they actually have a bow to them. And so by doing that, you're gonna reverse that and you're gonna end up wearing tires out extremely fast. So we're gonna do it the right way, show you how that's done. And yeah, so there'll be some time lapse and stuff. I don't know that you need to see the whole process, but I'll show you all the key points. So anyways, we'll get this one lifted up, get it on jacks, get those axles pulled out, and then I'll show you how we go about putting the new ones on. So the first thing you want to do is get this jacked up to where your tires are off the ground. As you can see, these shackles have flipped a little bit to where this one's still on the ground, but it's not going to matter much. Make sure you got jack stands on all the corners and stuff so that you're good. But what we're going to do first thing is rather than undo all these, I find that it's very time consuming for us. So I've got a plasma cutter. I'm just going to cut these U-bolts and then cut my brake lines and everything and then I can pull them out super fast. If you don't have that, you'll have to take your nuts off of your um, plates, bottom plates for your U-bolt, just take them off and then you're gonna wanna get them axles out so that you can get the new perches put on them. So um, when they're undersprung like this, chances are in order for you to get this axle out, you'll probably have to drop um, your leaf springs so that you can get it passed. If it doesn't have brakes, which some of your trailers won't, this one's got brakes on all four, they won't fit, your drums won't fit between these. But if they don't have brakes, sometimes you can just slide them axles out um, with allowing you to leave the, the leaf springs attached. But in this case, we're gonna have to drop a leaf spring um, to be able to get these out. So we're gonna go ahead, cut these off, get these axles out and then I'll show you how to do the spring perches.
So we got all of our leaf springs cut, or not our leaf springs, our U-bolts. Okay, so that axle's just sitting in there. Like I said, I was hoping that we could just fit these brake drums in between the leaf spring and this frame rail, but it just barely, barely not enough. So we're gonna end up taking these leaf springs out to get these axles out. Okay, so we've got these out. As you can see, these perches are welded. Okay, these axles, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but there's a bow to them. Okay, that bow's gotta go up. That's because once you load them down with weight, that axle's gonna flatten out. Okay, so if you're thinking that you can take this axle with it sitting this way with your leaf springs going underneath it, and just roll it around this way and put your leaf springs on top of it, you're gonna run into a number of issues. You're gonna wear tires out really fast and your brakes also aren't gonna work super well. So this is a look at what those brakes look like on the inside. So you've got your brake pad. Okay, this is the magnet. And as you can see, if I lift this up, uh, it's marked that this is a right-hand side. My wires are coming out from the back. Okay, so as power is applied to that magnet it grabs that outside drum and it pulls it and when it pulls it these brake pads see how they can pull apart they push and then that grabs onto that so by doing this upside down technically it's still going to grab that brake pad and it's going to pull it and open it so you'll still have brakes so the biggest issue that you're gonna have is that, yeah, you're gonna wear tires super fast just because that axle has that bow in it and you're um, gonna have that reversed of what it should be. So anyways, make sure you get that in the right position. This is what I recommend getting when you get these, okay? If you get new perches, you're gonna need four of them, two for each axle, okay? They're gonna just set right on top of this axle right above where the old ones sit. I would get new U-bolts, new nuts for them, and then also new bottom plates. So that should be all you need. This is a good time if your shackle straps are walleted out, um, your bushings on your leaf springs are bad, great time to replace all those as well. So these ones actually don't look terrible, so we're not gonna replace them. We're just gonna burn these new pads in and put it all back together and away we go. Okay, so now that I've got these tubes ground down to where I've got good metal to weld to. Now I did say that you wanna buy some of these you can cut these old ones off and reuse them, but the time spent cutting them off and trying to reuse them, these are only a couple bucks, so not worth the hassle. That way too, if you ever did want to lower it back down, not that big of a deal, you've already got perches there. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're just gonna to wanna to measure, make sure you're the same distance off of these. So I'm three and a half inches on this tube. Okay, make sure that you're straight parallel up and down with these. Okay, and then we can just burn it in. At first, what I'm gonna do, because most of yours, like I say, unless you've got um, just a free spool axle, most of yours that have brakes, they're gonna run the wires in this tube. So I don't wanna get this tube super hot, um, just in case I don't wanna melt these wires. So I'm gonna tack each corner. If I start burning in on this side, chances are it's gonna lift that other side. So if I tack in each corner that's going to hold it then i can go and i can just do some spot welding around it so anyways i'm going to get all these burned in and then we'll get them thrown in
So I've got all these welded up now. Will and Brady is gone and put all our bolts in our leaf spring so we've got them all bolted up. So these are ready to go back under it. So we'll get the new plates, new U-bolts, and we'll put these back under. Now these are directional, so make sure when you pull them out, there is a left and a right side. So make sure you put them back in the same way. Otherwise your brakes will be backwards also. So um, generally your wires are gonna come out of the, the back of the brake. That's not always the case. So like I say, I'd just make a note whether you gotta mark them. Some of them are stamped um, with an L or an R on them but i would before you pull them out make sure you know where they go back in so that you get your brakes going in the right direction we got these axles put underneath. Okay, I've just got these U-bolts hand tight. Okay, these are a grade five. If they're a half inch, chances are they're a grade five. They don't go to a grade eight bolt until you go to a five eighths. I do have this little cheat sheet that I go off of. Um, kind of tells you the technique of how to tighten them. Um, tells you what size, what they need to be tightened to. So. These are half inch, so we're gonna tighten them to 65 foot pounds. Generally what you'll do is you'll go in a crisscross pattern, um, tighten them a little bit at a time, then go another cycle until you reach your 65 foot pounds. So you're gonna wanna make sure you do that. You don't wanna lose an axle. So that's kind of the process there. Like I say, if you need to look up this sheet, um, that's the sheet there. So that'll tell you kind of all the specs. Once we get these all torqued up, what we want to do is we want to hook our brakes back up. As you can see, I've got four wires coming in. So the two are running across to this other brake. So they're running in that tube and coming up and they're making their connections here. These don't matter how they're hooked up. Um, so depending on what, like on this, we've got some two different color wires coming into them it don't matter which way you hook them up. So just make sure you get them hooked up. We're gonna use some heat shrink connectors so that we can keep the water out of them connections and everything, hook them back up, and then we're ready to put the tires back on it. We are going to um, pack these hubs, and, or pack the bearings in these, and then we're also gonna adjust these brakes. I do have another video on brake adjustment if you wanna see how to adjust these. Um, go to our channel and you can find that video there um, And maybe I'll do a separate video on how we we pack these bearings. So anyways, we're gonna get these hooked up and then we'll get it jacked up as you can see It was our tires were right on the ground or right off the ground before Now our brakes are dang near on the ground. So um, This is gonna lift this up quite a bit give them quite a bit of ground clearance. So We'll get these wired up, get the tires thrown on it, and then you can see how much of a lift that actually gave us. So that's the finished product. I will tell you one other little secret. Make sure that these shackles are faced that way to where your leaf springs are up above this equalizer. Sometimes if they get flipped, it's a pain in the butt to get them back. But with a pry bar, you can put a little pry bar between here and kind of pry them, um, but they are a pain if you let them get the other way. So make sure you get that, but yeah, that's a, a pretty easy way to get a lot more clearance. As you can see, their waste gate and stuff kind of hangs down pretty low. So this will keep them from dragging that, but yeah, pretty easy way to get 
a little bit of height out of your trailer to keep things from dragging so anyways we appreciate you watching um stay tuned for some more videos i'll try and do some um more of these type videos of, of projects that we're working on common things that we run into but if you haven't liked and subscribed to the channel please do so and we'll catch you on the next one